We are a church of faith and reason, and thanks be to God, we are possessors of the truth, the truth that is Jesus Christ. Thanks to Greek philosophers like Aristotle and the medieval philosophers like St. Thomas Aquinas, we can come to know about God logically, naturally, rationally, that he exists, he existed before time, and that he is the first cause of all things. And it is through faith, through revealed data, that we also come to know that all of that, including his power, is connected to his mercy. And all of that is connected to his hatred of sin, his warning for us to turn back, to repent. And all of that is ultimately founded upon him being the source of love. We can know that using faith and reason. One of my favorite quotes from the film Star Trek, The Undiscovered Country, is where Spock, played by Leonard Nimoy, reveals to his, spe his fellow Starfleet officer what logic actually is. He says to him, logic is the beginning of wisdom, not the end. So it is through our logic and our faith in the Lord that we can come to know his wisdom. His wisdom is his love. He loves us, you and I. He loves us when we do well. He loves us when we sin. He still loves us when we completely turn away from him. And he is overjoyed when a sinner comes back. The description of his rebukes, his warnings, his hatred for sin, there's a reason for that. There's a logic to that. It's the logic of love. But for what? for our salvation. It's because he wants to be able to come to each one of you, and you could take away Zacchaeus' name and put your own there, for him to say, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. Hear that urgency. Now that's the truth. So everything should be great, right? No. We have people in our lives who are of the faith, baptized, who have fallen away, who don't practice. If we look at Zacchaeus, I mean, he came from the Jewish people. They were literally given the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. They were the chosen people, a people of revelation, so everything should have been great for them, right? Wrong. If you look at scripture and you look at the story of Israel, there were plenty of people who did things that were contrary to the faith. Look at Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector. If you were a simple tax collector, everyone hated you. But he was the head guy. He stole money from people. Wouldn't be surprised if he used the might of the Roman Empire as his muscle in case there were any problems. But this, this powerful pre-existent and loving God became man, walked the earth, looked up into a tree to find this sinner looking for him. And the people were grumbling at him when he came to the feet of Christ rather than encouraging him. Again, he was a Jew and he did something contrary to the Jewish faith, stealing from people. Thou shalt not covet things belonging to thy neighbor. That's a big one. So, according to the logic of the world, the logic of the people there, yeah, we should look at him with disdain. Harsh judgment. He's a sinner. Well, how about us? Are we like the crowd? Do we ever cast judgment on those we know who are baptized like us, but they don't practice the faith and again, do what is contrary to what we know to be good and true? To those who have been away from Mass for a long time or who have fallen away, I'd like to echo what Monsignor was preaching on last week. We are entering an undiscovered country. We're entering the apostolic age where the culture is a little more hostile to the faith. So cafeteria Catholicism or Catholic light is not going to work. Cafeteria Catholicism. I'll just pick and choose what I like about the faith and I'll leave the things I don't agree with. Well, if we have the fullness of truth and you only take a piece of it, why would you only have part of the truth instead of the whole thing? Why give yourself just a piece when you can have the whole? Don't deny yourself that. Or Catholic light. 
I'll go to Mass on Easter, Christmas. I don't need to go to confession. God, God understands. He understands. And he's heartbroken. The book of wisdom would not speak about rebukes and warnings if it wasn't so crucial that Christ wants to stay at your home today. A condemning God wouldn't say any of these things, but a merciful, loving God does. So those who have been away from Mass for a long time or have fallen away from the faith, come home. For those of you who have come back, welcome home. We want you back. We've missed you. God misses you. And he's overjoyed to see you and to receive you as you receive him in the Eucharist. I promise you it doesn't take much to come back. Seven minutes in the confessional. That's all it takes. This place is not a court, a high court of judges. It's a field hospital. And we are medics, training from the true medic, Jesus Christ. So coming back, think of it, and going to the confessional, think of it as you're basically getting cleaned up before coming to your welcome home party. Give the faith one more shot. Give it a chance. Learn what the faith actually teaches, what it's actually all about how you're actually part of something incredible, logical, reasonable, and amazing. You're participating in the story of salvation. Now, for those of us who practice the faith, we need to look on those who have fallen away with mercy because you never know. Poor catechism. Maybe they weren't accompanied by somebody on their faith journey. For parents and godparents, you're making this vow for the child at baptism to accompany them, to help them. Maybe they were hurt by a member of the faith. Maybe they feel judged. Or maybe they just they fell to, to the world. There's an abundance of reasons. But let's look again at Zacchaeus. Christ wanted to stay at his house, and the chief tax collector in front of everyone confessed and made a penance. He promised to pay back all he had stolen and more. So we shouldn't grumble at nor ignore any of the Zacchaeuses in our lives. We should pray for their salvation. Last week, Monsignor and I met a woman after Mass who's undergoing what's called a reversion. That is, she fell away and she wants to come back. And she was encountered by the greeters right before, I believe, the 11 o'clock Mass. And she was met with a smile, with a warm, welcoming attitude. Can you imagine if she was ignored? Can you imagine if Christ and all the crowd just walked by? Oh, there's a guy in a tree. Okay, whatever. You know, they just ignored him, basically. No. What the greeters gave to her was an attitude of love that desires salvation. They were instruments of salvation in that way. We all can be instruments in that way. And I get it. It's really hard. I think the closer you are to a person, the people who you love, it gets more frustrating hard, and heartbreaking. It would be easy to throw them away if you didn't love them. And that's why it hurts, because you love them. I've had people in my life who've said, well, God understands. Don't worry, I got people praying for me in heaven. Yes, okay, that's true. But what's your reasoning? What, what's, what's, what, what, ha what happened? What's going on? Or, you know, people do things that are contrary to the faith, and then they try to reason in, in their own way. Oh, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Aren't you supposed to be merciful and loving? Look at what Pope Francis preaches on. Look at what Jesus did. Yes, a merciful attitude, a loving attitude. And it wouldn't upset me so, and I wouldn't bring this all to you if I didn't love you, which is something we need to remember, especially today in our society. And we're not alone in this. Think of the saints. If you come to the All Saints party after Mass, you're going to encounter many, many saints that we celebrate in the church. Some you know, some you might not know. Here's one you might know of. How many prayers and how many tears did St. Monica shed for her son when he was living a too earthly lifestyle? Prayers work. And she lived long enough to see her son be baptized. And her son became one of the greatest figures of the church 
You might know him, St. Augustine, the Bishop of Hippo, whose writings, his works, were very influential in our faith. And you can still read them today. The City of God, the Confessions, to name a few. Is our attitude going to be like the crowd looking at Zacchaeus? Dismissive, unloving, illogical to who we are as the image and likeness of God. Another saint in the church, the servant of God, Captain Emil Capon, who was the U.S. Army chaplain in the Korean War and was tortured and killed in a prison, used this logic. If we fail to forgive, then we're rejecting our own faith. Returning again to the Star Trek film, The Undiscovered Country, a main point of the plot is that the the enemies of Captain Kirk and Spock are actually finding themselves in a dire situation. So they're reaching out to the Federation, to Starfleet, for help. But Kirk, in his anger towards the other, towards the enemy, and that's part of the, a big part of the movie is his growth in that. He argues with, with Spock about this. Spock says, they're dying, Jim. And he just responds, let them die. In the history of the church, particularly in the third century, we actually had a debate over what to do with Christians who had denied the faith, who were lapsed, to save themselves from being killed and then wanted later on to reconcile, especially when Christianity became legalized. There were two camps. The first camp said, no. No forgiveness, no reconciliation, no reentry. You left us, you are not welcome. And we see that today in cancel culture, for example. The other camp, that won the debate and was led by the Pope at the time, Pope Cornelius, said this, after a period of penance, they can come back. Full reconciliation, 100%. Which of these camps echo Christ with Zacchaeus? Should be obvious. At the same time, we should be, we're, we're entering the apostolic age, so we should not be afraid to speak the truth, to talk to these loved ones, to those who have fallen away. We can talk to them about the truth, have these conversations with them in a way that we don't hide our identity or try to appease people to keep the peace. Let's just not talk about that. Let's just all agree. No, that's not what truth is all about. There is a truth, eventually. But at the same time, you can talk to them in a way that's loving. Again, I know people in my life who have done things that are contradictory to the faith who I will always disagree with what they did. Always. I still love them. I still love them. And we should also love our loved ones too. And I know it's hard and frustrating. They should know where we stand, but also they should always know as well that we love them. We receive them, as the people should have received Zacchaeus. After having conversations with them, and if they don't come back, and you can give the most convincing, the most rational, reasonable arguments about the faith, they may say, no, I don't buy it. Love them and pray for them anyway. Pray even more for them. And trust them to God's mercy, because while he loves all of us here, you and I, he was thinking about them on the cross and as he was carrying his cross. That is the logic of God. That's the wisdom of God. That's the love of God. So if you see someone after Mass or today at the All Saints party whom you don't recognize, smile at them. Welcome them. You never know who that person is and how they could be affected by that. Pray for those who have fallen away from the faith when you come to the Eucharist. Bring their name to the Eucharist. And if you don't know anyone who is like that, just offer all who have fallen away up to the Lord. Because God in his infinite wisdom knows who they are. And just like Zacchaeus, he doesn't want to lose them.